So the announcers explain this match will include, uh, among other things, unique camera angles and amplified audio. <laughs> so I don't know what this. What that means, everybody. The amplified audio was they actually took they actually the crowd sweetening. They had crowd sweetening. It's 1991 superstars all <laughs> over again. The world of professional wrestling has been using crowd sweetening for decades. And then when they finally, it was necessary. It took them four months to figure it out. And then the other thing was they had like two camera angles from like, they went to lock up and there was like somehow a camera in the ring in between them. A, a, a guy up. laid down on the floor looking up at them. There was that one. There was one when Orton tried a DDT and the same thing. Thank and God a couple, they a couple only did like, like two. Yeah, they, 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 those did not add anything to the match. They had a couple like wildy, wildy coyote cams looking straight down, uh, and a couple of uh, uh, other unusual angles. But the crowd noise made everything a hundred times better. Thank God for the crowd noise. You know, I got to say that some people really didn't like the crowd sweetening. Well, they can uh, get their own I, podcast. He, here's here's the thing. I got two things to say about this match. Okay. Dave said something really weird the other day that I didn't think about at the time, but it was brought to my attention later, where he mentioned that the match was pre-taped, and they had the ability to edit, and thus he felt it really wasn't fair, them sure. trying to have the greatest match of all time with the ability to pre-tape and edit if need be. Yes. And I didn't think about it at the time, but then later I thought, wait a second. Back in the day, 30, 40 years ago, and, and further back, if Vinny and I are wrestling, you're in one dressing room, I'm in the other dressing room, Tim tells us who's going over, thumb up, thumb down, we fucking go in the ring, and we call it in the ring. And there was a period where guys would start to choreograph matches. And one of the most famous is Ricky Steamboat versus Randy Savage sure. at WrestleMania 3, which was choreographed move for move. Every move was assigned a number. Yes. And they would the quiz each other on the number. Like, that's how choreographed that match was. And what did the old timers say? They said, that's cheating. It's cheating to choreograph the match start to finish in advance. So when I thought about it, I was like, how, why is Dave saying this is cheating? How is how is pre-taping it with the ability to do a little bit of editing any more cheating than practicing it move for move from start to finish? Isn't it basically the same thing? So anyway, yeah, yeah. the point of all of this is the the crowd sweetening, okay? I had absolutely no problem with it. I I thought that the live crowd having them go crazy for everything and do their chants, and then editing in sound from a live arena back in the day, I thought I liked it. Wrestling is all about suspending your disbelief. They're not really wrestling. They don't really <laughs> bounce off the ropes. It probably was not real blood. You suspend your disbelief. And... What they did with the crowd sweetening, I thought was low key enough that I could easily suspend my disbelief when watching. Like it didn't it didn't hit me in the head that it was fake. Some people, if it did to you, then that's fine. You don't have to like it. But I was able to suspend my disbelief, and I thought it was better. I thought it made things way, way, way better, and I hope they use it for all matches going forward. Well, the problem, Vinny, is they are live most of the time. And mm. you, you can lay down a bed of just like a crowd, you know, just making some sound. I'm no they sound had to be very, technician. Well, they had to do a lot of work to like find a this is awesome chant to put in when they chanted this is awesome and boos and cheers. I mean, you probably could do it live, but it would take, there would be a learning curve. Uh, maybe, but I, I can't help but think it's got, yeah, one button for cheers, one button for boos, and one, that's really all you need. And this to have, have faded and out. I don't know. I liked it. I liked it. So, we get instructions. Now, it's amusing, because they had the match at Mania, which was a street fight, or whatever you want to call it. And here, the, the this, this match is being held under very strict rules. 
I believe at one point it was Tom Phillips who referenced the rules, the plethora of rules in this matchup. They gave him very stern instruction. No eye gouging, no hair pulling, pulling, no low blows. So as a result, they had a straight wrestling match with the rules very strictly enforced. And as such, as the action unfolded and the rules started to get bent more and more, you know, there's a reason pro wrestling has these rules in the first place. So that when they get broken, it means something. When you cut, start coming out with a kendo stick and a trash can lid, you just hit each other a few times, it's all meaningless. When you do 20 minutes of grappling and you're getting nowhere and so the heel can't do anything, he's frustrated, so he whips the guy into the stairs, suddenly that damn stair spot means that all the, uh, everything in the world. So the wrestling is very good. It turns into brawling. The brawling is very good. They started with these high spots and I, May have been the hardest, harshest critic of their Mania match, but I loved this match as much as I hated that one. Every other match in the show, even really, even including Drew and Bobby, the high spots, you could tell they were working together to do cool athletic stuff. The high spots in this match didn't look choreographed. You know they were, because the guy had to be in the right position for everything, but they didn't look that way. It was all done very, very well. The actual wrestling here was great. Orton gets busted up after a headbutt, and... He's, he, he cuts Edge off, he's working him over, starts throwing him into furniture because he's desperate. He lays him on the announced desk, and he goes to whisper in Edge's ear. And the camera picks it up. It's kind of hard to tell because the ref is shouting and there's the crowd noise. I think the announcers are talking it over, talking over it too. But if you're paying attention, Orton whispered, I'm gonna fucking kill you, motherfucker. <laughs> Throws him into the ring. And then the last part of this match is where they begin to steal moves from other great wrestlers and other great matches throughout history. We had the Three Amigos. We had the Kill Switch. We had uh, the Pedigree. We had a uh, 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 something else. Uh, the Rock Bottom by Edge. All the great moves from other great stars. None of them were worked. Orton kept go- trying for the RKO. Couldn't get it. Kept trying the draping DDT. Couldn't get it. And, of course, when he finally hit the miss, still kicked out. In the middle of all these near falls, Edge hooks him for a backslide, and they're struggling and struggling and it's getting nowhere. And so Edge kicks him in the knee and then gets, is able to pull him over for the backslide. I was so happy. Just subtle things like that. It's a fight. Make it look like a fight. Get a fight for that backslide. That was awesome. Finally, Orton is out of all ammunition. He goes for the dreaded punt of death, and Edge is helpless. He's going to end his career again, but Edge sees him coming and hits him with a spear out of nowhere for two instead. That was great. There is more stuff, and finally, Edge has been using, apparently, the Dexter Loomis head and arm choke. And he gets him in this hold, and Orton looks done for, but Orton hits a low blow, the first one of the match, like 45 minutes in, they waited, saved it to this very end. Hits a low blow, the ref doesn't see, Edge is incapacitated, Orton follows with a punt, and wins the match. An awesome wrestling match. I thought this match was fucking great. It's not the greatest match of all time. But I would not say it was the greatest wrestling match ever. No, it was not the greatest wrestling match ever. But it was easily one of the greatest matches of either guy's career. Randy Orton was working his oh, ass God. off yes. in this match. Way more than usual. I mean, he was working. And Edge was great. The psychology of the match was great. Like, you can complain about the crowd. You can complain about some of the weird camera angles. You can complain about... The way that WWE just, WWE is everything, but Randy Orton and Edge got in the ring, and they fucking tore it up. And the things I thought watching the match were, number one, I hope every goddamn student from the Performance Center whose job it is to boo and cheer, I hope they watch this match like 50 times. This was a clinic. This was a psychological, professional wrestling clinic. Especially for what they want to be, which is WWE wrestlers. True. The, God, they were just so good in this match. And the finish, I'm not just saying this because I called this finish. The reason I called this finish was because this was the obvious finish. And that is that they do their straight wrestling match. It's hold for hold. They're they're trying to have the greatest wrestling match of all time. And then fucking Randy Orton does something underhanded. Yes. And he cheats. Because he, he had he to. wins. Because okay? he's desperate and frustrated. Yes. So there, there are a few keys to why this is so fucking brilliant. Number one, I mean, Randy Orton is the heel. 
And he even said in one of his promos that he suckered Edge into taking this match. He had this planned the whole time. If I can't beat you clean, and if I get in dire straits, I will fuck you, and I will win this match. He's the guy who asked for a straight, honest, professional wrestling match. And then he cheated. Yes. Fucking great. Now, the other great thing about it, which I don't even think they'll even think about, but I mean, this is, this is obvious to me. They built this up in advance as the greatest wrestling match of all time. And quite frankly, they had a really fucking great match. I mean, they may just go and say, you know what? It delivered. It was the greatest wrestling match of all time. I'm sure they'll they just, will. They'll just change their history. But, but, they can also say, this would have been the greatest wrestling match of all time. But that fucker Randy Orton ruined it by using a low blow. That's their out. So, I just thought the finish was fucking brilliant. I thought Randy Orton was awesome. I thought Edge was awesome. I thought they totally, as you noted, redeemed themselves for that fucking boring-ass WrestleMania match. And the funny thing is, Randy's complaint that, oh, people that didn't like the length of that match, I mean, they just don't, they just don't uh, uh, respect, uh, you know, great, re- whatever, whatever bullshit he said. Like, this was almost the same fucking length, and this one was awesome. I think. So maybe the problem wasn't the length. Yes. Maybe the problem was that this was a fucking great match, and the other one you did was boring. That is true. I, I think this one was actually longer. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, This one was not longer than 45 minutes. I think it was I about, can find it was out. A, it was right about 45 minutes. It was very close. But, yeah, th- th- there is one other person who was awesome, really on the show, but especially in this match, who, who we must mention. That is Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe on commentary was the fucking man. He knows what he's talking about as a competitor, so he can break down holds mechanically, whereas like physically to execute these things, how, how they are done for both the person delivering the move, how it affects the person taking the move. He's very good at pointing out the facials. Many times, Edge would react in fear and grab his neck even before uh, Randy Orton delivered a move in anticipation, and uh, Joe would point this out. He has a gravity to everything he says. I don't think he mumbled one time. He knows what he's talking about. This match Holy was better... Shit. Yes, Brian. Not only were you right, Vinny. Hey, woo. You were really right. This match was eight minutes longer. Yes. All right, so if anything, if anything, that really goes to show that their last match was just fucking boring. Yes. <laughs> I think that's undisputable. 44 anyway, Samoa- minutes and 45 seconds for this match. Samoa Joe was great. This match was made greater by Samoa Joe, and I don't remember the last time I said that about a main roster WWE match. It's been years, probably. 